Ow. <sighs> What's up, everyone? Mega Punchy? Back with Higurashi When They Cry, Chapter 4, Himatsubushi. It's been a long time since I've said that. Uh, welcome back. If you're still interested in watching, I'm um, still interested in finishing. Uh, yeah, as I'm sure you've noticed, I've been gone for a long time. Um, I could say due to other things, such as you might have seen, I've uploaded two cosplay music videos. Um, honest, I mean, honestly, I'm going to say it's more likely laziness on my part. I'm sorry about that. I don't know. Just, I think the editing process with my computers, I can't, okay, you know, I'm even playing my computers, the, just, I didn't really like editing as much, and it's not like I can, you know, afford an editor, so I'm not going to, I'm going to do it all myself. Uh, but, regardless, it was just me being lazy, uh, I'm, but I'm going to finish this because, I mean, I was going to, so, I was just going to finish this anyway, chapter four, because I wanted to, and then I checked online, I just happened to see in the news, um, on Steam, that chapter five has been out since April! And I've just been, uh, fudging around, you know, not really doing anything. Well, I say not doing anything. I've done my cosplay music videos, and this is... It's not like I'm trying to... I'm going to transition into more video things, but I have taken more of a liking to it. Um, and I've kind of invested myself a little bit into more, like, actual video things, so... Um, I've got a couple of like, well, I'm probably just gonna do one general, like, vlog. Not really vlog. It's more. It's it's a montage of things I've been doing. So I've been yes, I've been lazy, but I've also been doing things. If it's not just, I haven't been sitting around all day, or at least not every day. Um, that's one thing. So I'll so I'm gonna finish this. I've already bought chapter five. And even besides chapter 5, I happened to catch the Humble Bundle today. My friend uh, texted me and I immediately snatched it up. A bunch of uh, visual novels. I actually haven't heard of any of them except for Nekopara, which I saw um, a lot. They, they had a booth, I think. The Sekai Project at Asen. I actually didn't stop by at all because I didn't... I bought one of them, but I never actually played it really so I don't really know anything about it um but there's some of those and I mean just check out the humble bundle page for the Sekai project I got all of those so if there's any that interest anyone or any that's particularly famous that I don't know about I uh, go ahead and tell me and I will guess uh, I, I will do that one eventually because as you can I don't have the best track record of finishing things but I'm on it I'm on it don't worry about it um, another thing is I've changed my name one thing I was trying to do at least even though I wasn't uploading videos was not branding but like kind of clean up my page a bit and make it a little more personalized so I added I have a little um, icon which I don't think I'm gonna add to my Higurashi videos because I don't know I don't want it to like take it away. I don't want it to impede anything really. Um, I have a banner and an icon which my sister made, so thanks to her. And I also changed my name to Mega Punchy. Now I changed my name to Mega Punchy because there are a few cosplayers, and there's one, the cosplayer who did the um, the Resident Evil cellular merchant guy he actually i i told him that i would like tag him and ch and for my on my instagram where i upload well so far i've only used it just for like um cosplays cosplay footage that i couldn't fit into the cosplay music videos or something was wrong with it and i didn't want to put it in the music video so i just you know uploaded the quick clip to instagram uh i told him that i would tag him but i somehow either didn't save the note and I lost it and I feel really bad um, but when I was interacting with him I told him my YouTube name there's already a few punchies I didn't really realize it and there's a really big punchy one um, 
so I changed my name to Mega Punchy. But uh, which it it just seems easier easier for me to uh, to find myself. So I'm still gonna refer to myself as Punchy, but channel name is Mega Punchy now. Ugh. Um, and with Mega Punchy, like I already mentioned, I had an Instagram. You guys can go follow it. Um, not sure what else can be adding around there. Maybe just daily stuff that's interesting enough to share with strangers. So far, it's just extra extra cosplay footage. And um, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, so let's wrap it up and get started with finishing Himats uh, Chapter Four, Himatsubushi. And we're back. Um, so I did not watch my last video. It's been a long time, more than three weeks, more than a month. Well, we know more than a month because um, Chapter Five came out, and I still didn't finish. Th this but basically Akasaka-san I remembered his name he hadn't on his tour in um, Higurashi it was when is when um, Rika-chan over here she went like her she went to like a darker self because it seemed like everyone in Higurashi has like has a darker self and they have that natural happy f like facade everyone seems to have it because of this underlying higurashi demons thing going on um this is just like kind of a recap for myself and if for i don't know if there's any cosplay music video people who subscribed and they're interested in watching this hello go check out my other videos it's gonna it would help a lot more um i'm just kind of go what i from what i remember um and so uh, I think the last thing I saw was that we, um, you know what, I don't even remember. I think we were talking to police and we were late calling in. Um, so let's get back to it. The person at the family council who expressed interest in the man being dispatched from the Metropolitan Police, Rika Furude. That's right. We, the last thing I think we saw was the meeting of, led by the Sonozaki family with the th three families of um higurashi the three head families and they mentioned that they knew that there was going to be someone from the police department tokyo De uh metropolitan police department coming down and rika was strangely interested in finding who it was and she heard that we we're from tokyo so she knows it's us and then the person who was waiting for me the whole time in the bus shelter rika furude it was an unthinkable image. No, it was a delusion. When we met at the bus bus shelter, did Rika-chan already know my true identity? Did she know that I was Akasaka, dispatched from the from the Metropolitan Police Department, and come to meet me? Then, including Mir Kimiyoshi, every villager that I met, everybody knew but just pretended not to? because Oryu had given instructions not to interfere. Thinking about it logically, it didn't seem possible, well, there's a lot of impossible things that happened here at Higurashi. I, I, I just realized I keep saying Higurashi. Higurashi is not the place. If you're new, I've been saying it wrong. <laughs> Higurashi is not the place. Um, Him Hinamizawa is the area that I'm in, so. Um, the three, like the head, three, the three head families are not from Higurashi. Higurashi are actually the, um, they're kind of like the, the things in the summer that make noise. I can't remember their name right now, but the insects like that. I met quite a number of people. If there's people that are good at acting, then there's people who are bad at hiding things. If there was that many people, then there should have been somebody among them who knew I was from public safety and couldn't hide their hostility. However, I didn't feel any presence like that. You don't even know, man. You should see when um, the people of Hinozawa feel threatened and gang up on someone. But then, even still, why did Oryu tell them to leave me alone? Was it because they were careless about it? 
it would only raise more suspicion? Or was it because they believed a rookie like me wouldn't be able to find anything? Akasaka is a coward. I recalled that strange voice which could only make me believe that Rikuchan had been possessed. That unknown entity, no matter how you looked at it, knew my true identity from the get-go. And then, how did it warn me again? That's right. It warned me to hurry up and go back to Tokyo. Instead of the realistic worry that the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance had discovered my identity, the absurd worry brought on by the unknown girl stuck with me more. What exactly was that girl? What was the thing I would eventually regret? That mysterious girl, Rika Furude. Let's stop this. Now this is interesting because this is how this... Once again, I'm explaining as if you haven't watched it. But if you haven't, you should go back to the... to All the way to chapter one and get on with everything. And catch up. Like I need to, really. Um, this started as Akasaka's memory. So everything's already happened. We already know... Like we, obviously, this is the past because Rika's super young. Um... But it's interesting to see it from the past right now. It's like a whole, it's like I'm playing, replaying the whole thing over again. So everything is surprising to me, even though it shouldn't be. Um, but it, but I'm basically saying that it's he. It's from his memory, so he lives through this. So you gotta wonder what they're going to do to him because they know. Everything I was thinking of right now was merely conjecture. Tomorrow, first thing in the morning, I'll report everything I heard right now to HQ and wait for their orders. There was no mistaking that the possibility the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance were related to this case was there. Oh wait, there was a weird emphasis there, right? There was no mistaking that the possibility the Onigafuchi Defense Alliance was related to this case was there. And that the fact that my cover was blown when I was in a precarious position. But as everybody at HQ was already extremely busy, they might not be able to spare the support. Also, there's more people, honestly. I mean, I know you'd want help, but you just stick out even more, even though they already know everything. And we're talking to an informant that, um, the police... I don't even remember his name, oh my god. I'm terrible, I'm terrible on time, I'm so sorry, I'm terrible. The police guy um, introduced us to. We played Majo with him, and Akasaka san was really good. Is that everything? If you want, I can drop you off wherever you like. Uh, sorry. In that case, the station where we originally met, please. A rural, a rural road, rural road, where even a street light was rare. I couldn't see anything. I wasn't aware of anything but the asphalt that was lit up by the headlights. That's frightening. I don't know if I already told the story that I, when um, I went with my girlfriend's family, I was invited to a wedding in Indiana, and she drove home, and I had to stay awake in the driver's, I mean, the passenger seat, and just with no lights around is terrifying. Outside of that light, was it simply darkness, or was there something lurking there, waiting to strike? I had to think. I drew the short straw here. I want to go back to Tokyo. For some reason, the voice of the girl warning me to go back to Tokyo still lingered in my head. Uh, I would. I. I. I, I problem is he can't, because he's on the job. But he's got. Oh, he's got his wife waiting, and his wife had the baby. I don't know if he actually had the baby already, but she's going to have a baby, and that sucks. All right, we're 14 minutes in, and I've rambled so much, but we haven't gone through a lot. Which isn't that telling, honestly. Wow, that's how long ago it was Mahjong Prodigy. <laughs> Alright, let's check out the tips. The investigation runs aground. Oh, water break. Not used to this at all anymore. Yeah. Yesterday, we met at the restaurant in Ginza. Ginza. That topic popped up. That's overstepping their boundaries, isn't it? They're meddling too much with public safety. If they keep doing that, they're going to set a bad precedent. 
it seems that Mr. Inugai is openly un uncomfortable about the way public safety is doing things. The vice minister is probably going to say something to that effect during Monday's debate session. But what can you do? We, all, we can only have the director address the vice minister. Vice minister, what an interesting position name. That's why we pay him the big bucks. Well, if it comes to that, they're going to ask him for proof that the minister is being threatened. Sometimes I don't know what side he's on. If he's not on ours, then what? Well, he's probably getting some pressure from the minister. We'll probably just have to proceed with the investigation while he sweats it out in the vice minister's office and buys us some time. He might get it so wrung out to dry that all that'll be left are dregs, though. So, how's the investigation going? All the juicy leads I was pinning my hopes on turned out to be duds. Honestly, I'm at a loss. There are reports that the Hinamizawa Dam project has been showing up a lot lately in the minister's press releases. So what about that? Hmm. Well, you say showing up, but it's really more of a very slight feeling that something's strange. He just happened to mention it during his speech at the prefecture forum, prefectural forum. So it just might have been something that he was mentioning because it was relevant at the time. If I remember correctly, a local organization that was protesting uh, uh, a localization there was protesting quite violently. No? It's, don't know if I read that wrong. The Onigafuchi Defense Alliance. I think Akasaka-kun was investigating that. I think those guys could possibly be behind what's happening now. Even if we can't say there's anything overtly suspicious about them, it might not be prudent to remove them from the picture. Akasaka-kun reported in passing that he couldn't deny that possibility. Then, isn't there merit in investigating them? We're going through everything with a fine-tooth comb, so if they're one of the suspicious groups that are left, we'll eventually have to. Well, they're not the only group we should investigate, right? Ahaha! If we're just talking about groups that are suspicious as Onigafuchi, there's quite a few of them. We don't have the men, the time, or the money at all. I'm not sure who I'm supposed to be talking as right now. I'll try asking for more details from Akasaka-kun. I feel like we should pay some extra attention to the Defense Alliance. He's reported that he's established a rapport with the villagers. It also seems that he's collaborating with the local police. Keep your contact with Akasaka-kun on the down low. Also, if there's anything in his info that merits investigation, it's possible we can send him send reinforcements. Got it. Sorry, Chief Katako Kataoka. There's a phone call from the director. Should I? Ch oh, that's someone else. Should I transfer it over here? Ah, uh, no, it's okay. I'll head over there. Yes, hello. Oh man, going through voices is so hard. One thing I was hoping to do, like as in my, uh, let's just say in my downtime was kind of get the knack of different voices. I don't, and I know listening back, I actually, like, I think I'm doing different voices, like, ha 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 ha, as I did for one guy and huh, for the other guy. I don't, I don't know if it actually came out. Do you believe that there are choices in life? There are many people who lament the following. If there only existed points in life where there were clear choices to make, we would be able to scrutinize those carefully and make decisions that will lead us to a better future. Every time I hear people lament as such, I cast it off as a rather trivial worry. Even if you were given a clear choice, it wouldn't be meaningful at all, and there wouldn't be any such path to a better future. Is this hard to understand? Then let's pretend that in front of you there are two strange boxes. In other words, you have two clear choices. Do you open the red box or the blue box? If you open the red box, you open the matrix. A lot of things would be uncertain, even with that choice, wouldn't they? If you don't have the option of opening neither, then your choice boils down to the natural impulse of opening the box that holds the better result for you. 
Then, after examining the shape and features of each, and pondering a great many things, you have to pick either the red or the blue. If this was you, which box would you open? Red or blue? If you were to go by their traditional meanings, then red would be a, a dangerous, threatening color. However, that doesn't automatically mean that it would be calm and relaxing inside the blue box either. In fact, it might be, it might be even that the colors are a trap. Make you wary of the red box and have you open the blue one. A trap? Could it be the content of the box aren't a reward, but rather a penalty? See? Now you're at a loss. You're so conflicted over the choice between red and blue that you started wishing there was an option to open neither and just leave. But there isn't. You have to open either the red box or the blue box. Oh, I forgot to say this, but if you choose one box, the other would disappear. So you'll never know the contents of the box you don't open. I'll just put that, that rule at the end there for you. Now, why don't you choose the red box or the blue box? It's alright. You won't lose anything by picking either one. Come on now. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Um, well, <laughs> this is scary. I've never had to choose, like, this is a visual novel. Like, this is, this is legitimately scaring me because this is a visual novel. I haven't had to choose anything. All I've had to do was scroll, read, um, maybe make guesses to myself and to you guys. But I've never had to choose. And I'm going to choose... I like blue as a color, but because I already mentioned, just like as a joke, um, or just a reference, I guess, not really a joke, open the red box to go to the matrix and the blue, uh, open the red box to get out of the matrix and the blue to stay in. So, when red's supposed to be wealthy with like the Chinese, with, like Chinese, like New Year and everything, right? It's also this scary background. We're going to the red box! Have you thought about it? In the end, you chose this color, didn't you? As soon as you choose, the other box disappeared. So you can give up on the contents of that one, okay? That's the rule. Now open up the box you chose. Inside the box there was- Oh god! Just rolled over to my closet and closed the door. <laughs> uh, like, I'll never forget how scary um, chapter one was to me. Like, the eyes. I, you guys know I don't like, I, I don't really like eyes. The eyes, um, looking through the crevice. Um, her, uh, Rena screaming liar. Okay, so. Inside the box, there was a piece of caramel. I know you're a little bit disappointed. I am not disappointed. I am happy with that. Well, that's only natural. No matter how you look at it, it looks like you drew the dud. The correct box might have had a bar of chocolate in it, for all you know. No, in fact, something incredible like a pair of tickets to Hawaii might have been in there. Be even if you wanted to verify that, the other box has already disappeared. There's no way you can check now. But if you think about it from an optimistic point of view, just maybe the other box is empty and this box was the winner. Well, I'm more of a look at it as even I didn't get a penalty. I got something delicious. Unless it has a needle in it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out chapter one. It's the red bean buttons. And being satisfied, or perhaps not, with such a cheap prize, you pop it in your mouth and start chewing it happily. Uh-oh. So what do you think in the end? If you're given a second chance, would you try to open the other box? 
but unfortunately, the chance to choose between the red box or the blue box has come and gone, never to be seen again. The chance to change your selection will never come. Don't your parents often say, every choice you make in life only happens once, so choose carefully? Hee 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 hee. Oh, don't, don't laugh. Oh, God. See? Choices aren't that great after all. Aren't you a little disillusioned now? Uh, go away, Tip. What was that? What? What is this? What is this? I don't like that. I, I, I don't know what it has to do with anything either. <laughs> anyway, the glint in the demon's eye. I don't know the psychologicalness of it, but man, that creeped me out <laughs> really badly. Uh, aha, uh -huh. yes. So the wake will be from 6 p.m. tomorrow, and the service will be the day from noon until 1. Sorry, I might have actually... Sorry again, I might have actually bumped my microphone. The venue will be Okinomiya Ceremony Hall. I see. It's Deputy Mayor Ikizawa's grandson's funeral we're talking about. We have to pay respects. Oh my god! Is this... Is it the same mayor? So if you're still watching and you haven't, um, watch the other ones. Also for my own benefit once again. The beginning of this chapter started with kidnapping the mayor's grandson. And throughout the chapter there have been little bits of like, well, I think it mostly be in the tips of the view from the people who kidnapped the kid. And the, kidna and the kid was still alive, you know. They were keeping him alive, um, but maybe, maybe, oh god, maybe they killed him because he wasn't cooperating or like on a certain day he was supposed to do something, so, I, I mean, I don't know if this is him, the missing kid. Mian, I'll have you go in my stead. Okay, got it. Should I wear morning clothes? How much should I bring for the funeral offering? You can go in your school uniform. Make sure you button it up properly. For the money, 50, no, 100,000 yen. They've done a lot for us. Me and quietly whistled in awe at the exorbitant amount of money her grandmother was offering. Ikizawa-san's been a prudent person ever since his days as head of the Okinomiya Municipal Office. Even if those government types paid me a visit, they'd always stay outside. But whenever I offered Ikizawa-san a cup of tea, he'd come inside and carefully listen to what I had to say. He always lent a proper ear to what people had to say. Others should learn from a person like him. The two guests made a show of nodding, making clear they were paying attention as Oreo reminisced. The sight of them trying not to get on Oreo's bad side was humorous enough to elicit laughter from me and occasionally. How young was Deputy Mayor's Mayor Ikizawa's grandson when he died. Um, 11 years old, apparently. Oya closed her eyes and shook her head lightly, lamenting the loss of such a young life. Also, oh, maybe it's a different, different mayor. Well, it, it's, it did say deputy mayor. I think the other um, one whose grandson got kidnapped, although I think there were a lot of kidnappings, but I'm not sure, was like the, just the mayor. If I recall correctly, he said he only had one grandchild. How sad. There's nothing worse for a parent than outliving their offspring. Ah ha ha ha. You're really nice to other people, Granny. If she and I died, would you be this sad? Don't be stupid. Something like that is bad luck. Having got the reaction she expected, me and cackled. The two guests, unsure if they were supposed to laugh along, instead forced awkward smiles. We'll take our leave for today then. We'll be by tomorrow evening at 5 to pick you up. Until then, please excuse us. After borrowing their hedges repeatedly, the guests left by the front door. Me and saw them off, waving our little hand goodbye. They're gone. It must be rough for them to pay you a courtesy visit, Granny. It would have been fine if they just broke the news over the phone. 
Was it true that Oyu Sonozaki was a central person for both her relatives and the residents of Hinomazawa village as a whole? Oh, it was true. As a voting block, they numbered in the several thousands. It wasn't hard to imagine the mayor would try to pander to her. Unlike Mian, however, Oryu was looking up longingly at the sky from the veranda. What's the matter? Are you going to see? Are you going senile? <laughs> I just thought that no matter whose grandchild it was, I'd feel sorry for them. Saying that, she let out a deep sigh. Mian let out. Mian was let down, as normally her grandma would, grandmother would have scolded her for her attitude. Mian, you know, that minister's grandson, how long has it been since he was abdu abducted? Hmm, four days, maybe? Or you let out another deep sigh. He may be the grandchild of our bitter enemy, but I still feel sorry for him. Really? That's enough of a warning. We should bring this to an end soon. The playful expression drained from Mian's face, leaving behind a stern one. And then, as if to ascertain Oryu's will, looked into her eyes. Oryu, expressing her intention with only those eyes, looked back at Mian's. I want some tea. Could you call for some? Some of that chocolate, too. Mian gave a small nod and then turned around. Oh no! Shimiko-san, are you there? Grandma wants some tea. Could you prepare some? From far away, a voice responded in the affirmative. I hope that's not code or something. After confirming she'd been heard, picked up the phone and began dialing. Ah, uh, hello? This is Mian. Yeah. Is my father there? Uh-oh. Calling her Yakuza father okay we didn't get that far um because i had a lot to say plus this what's in the box thing just whoa god got to me i don't, I don't know its purpose uh, other than to creep me out or something um but i'm probably just gonna take a little bit of five minute break and head into the next one not sure when this will actually be edited um hopefully soonish but uh, like I showed you guys in the vlogs, I like I have been doing some other stuff, and um, I'll have to get those get those um, cleaned up and edited and everything too. So I've got a lot of stuff to do, and it's been a long enough time where I'm pretty happy to do it. I'm just impatient with uh, this computer, and don't think I will be getting a new one soon, which sucks. But uh, that's how it goes, right? Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Watch out for red and blue boxes. Don't let someone ask you to choose between two and just walk away. Bye. -bye.